So I wasn't going to do another comic book video, but there's some interesting information that literally just dropped like within the past three hours that I wanted to go over. Uh, as you know, AT&T has literally taken a chainsaw to DC Comics. They got rid of a ton of people. And for the longest time, I've been talking about this. So has other, a few other creators talking about what is the future of DC Comics. And I've been saying they don't want to be in the business of periodicals. They're going to cut a lot of those down. They're going to keep a few of them, notably ones that sell. That's why you're going to see an expansion of Batman books. <laughs> Batman books sell. And that's why they're going to just pump those out like crazy. They're not doing a lot of risk-taking anymore, it would seem, because, I mean, AT&T is literally tightening their belt on everything. You were a fool if you thought this wasn't going to hit DC Comics. They're tightening the belt on everything that they own because they're well, first off, they have Elliott Management, the activist hedge fund, literally up their ass on this stuff, and they're making sure everything gets tightened. And there's a lot of reasons for that. If you want to know why, look up Elliott Management. It's a very interesting story. But here's some of the victims. As of November, a lot of titles are getting canceled. DC cancels Teen Titans, Young Justice, Suicide Squad, Hawkman, and more. Now, the interesting thing, I haven't been reading Hawkman. But I know a lot of people praise this book and talk about how good it really is. It's not selling very well, though. We're going to go over that. Teen Titans actually is an okay book. That's getting canceled. Uh, Young Justice is a Brian Michael Bendis turd. Uh, the first of what I would imagine many Wonder Comics to get canceled. Suicide Squad I haven't been reading other than like the first issue, and it had a bunch of woke nonsense in it. Uh, given the author, I'm not surprised by that, but... I want to take a look. So a lot of these books are getting canceled. Let's take a look at why they're probably getting canceled. We can go to Comic-Con January 2020, which I think is a good, it's a good month to use because this is pre-pandemic to an extent. This is when the comic book industry was still running normally. So I think it's a good time to like really gauge where interest was at. So let's take a look at where some of these books that have been canceled were selling. Harley Quinn, 23,000. Right, Teen Titans, 18,000. Aquaman, which hasn't been officially canceled, but I'm thinking it likely is going to be canceled at issue 65. That's where they're kind of ending it. So I don't want to say that this book is for sure gone, but given the sales for the book, I wouldn't be shocked if it is. That's at 17,000. Suicide Squad is at 17,000. Red Hood at 15K. Hawkman. 14k now hawkman is like i said people have said that book's actually really good so you know it's unfortunate that it's not selling but that's i think one of the reasons why you're seeing these books get canceled they're calling the line if it don't sell they're, they're dumping it and you're going to see a lot of books get dumped particularly oh here's batman and the outsiders 17k which is too bad that book's actually pretty good and the writer's a great guy so sucks to see but you know Business is business. Now, I think you're going to see a lot of comics get dumped, particularly a lot of books that Brian Michael Bendis is writing. People can't stand him. That's why I was glad to see that they're evaluate, they're reevaluating his contract. I think that's lovely. Please get him off of Superman, for God's sakes. But, yeah, you're seeing DC trim the fat. And they're kind of doubling down on this. Jim Lee did an interview today. This is what I really want to talk about. DC's Jim Lee on the company's future. We are still in the business of publishing comics. And that's true. They are. They're going to be in the business of selling you digital comics, uh, graphic novels that are probably going to collect those digital comics and then be sold in Scholastic and bookstores and comic shops. And young adult novels, which they're going to sell to Scholastic as well. That's where a lot of money is. So that will absolutely be the future of DC Comics. I've heard this from two different people. I know Ethan Van Skyver has talked about it. A few other people have been talking about this. Uh, the two women that are kind of starting to run the show here, Michelle Welves and Marie Javins, they're very, very vocal on not caring about floppies. Uh, they're very vocal about it. And the fact that these two are responsible for, they were, were responsible for mostly young adult novels and digital comics should tell you where DC wants to move 
in the future. I think that that's a pretty clear statement by putting them in charge. Digital and young adult books are where they're going. So you're still going to be able to get your comics, but they're just not going to spend the money on sending them to the press anymore. Because let's be honest, they don't sell very well. AT&T is, is tightening that belt. It's just the truth. I don't understand why some people have a hard time grasping this. Does it suck? Yes. Will it hurt comic shops? Yes. I don't want to see comic shops go out of business. I like going to the comic book shop, but it's nothing. It's not like it's a personal problem that, that AT&T has with comic shops. They want to make money and they want DC comics to make money. I think DC comics will probably bounce back from this because listen, publishing a bunch of floppies that don't sell doesn't make you money. They're trimming the fat. Now, maybe, maybe they'll make a bunch of money from this. Profits will go up and they'll be able to make more floppies. That could happen. But as of right now, this is where things stand. Jim Lee came out, gave a nice interview to Hollywood Reporter, and I want to go over some of it. I think some of it's pretty interesting. Yes, there will be more Batman which is something that Bleeding Cool said. They're going to publish more Batman books. Why? Because Batman sells. Uh, This is one of them, actually. DC will publish John Ridley's 5G Luke Fox as Batman comic after all. It kind of looks like it, but it looks like it's going to be a miniseries. This is interesting. I wonder what they're going to do with this. Are they going to bring back 5G? I don't think so, but uh, this was an interesting reveal. And I guess they're going to talk about it during Fandom, which I'll be paying attention to. Uh, I'm going to watch that, and I will cover anything that I think is interesting that comes out of that fandom thing. Uh, I'll let you know how that goes. But uh, Jim Lee gives an interview here. They go over some stuff. Is DC still publishing comics? Absolutely, 100%. It is still the cornerstone of everything that we do. The need for storytelling, updating the mythology is vital to what we do. The organization leans on us to share and establish meaningful elements of the content that they need to use and incorporate for all of their adaptions. When we think about reaching global audiences and we see comics as helping drive that awareness and the international brand is very much a part of our future. That said, we will be, we will be reducing the size of the slate, but it's going to But it's looking at everything and looking at the bottom 20%, 25% of the line that wasn't breaking even or was losing money. It's more about punch for the pound, so to speak, and increasing the margins of the books that we are doing. It was about aligning the books to the franchise brand content we've developed and making sure that every book we put out, we put out for a reason. That sounds about right. So I think 25% probably end up going to be in about, it's probably going to end up being about 35% maybe 40, 25% for now. And I would expect that to go up probably. Uh, Look, 25% of their books, the bottom feeder books, the books that aren't selling, gone. See ya, you're out of here. So what does that mean? Woke nonsense, for example, that's not selling, you're out of here. We're not gonna sell you. You're gonna get a chance, you don't sell, you're gone. That's what that means. You know, all of that stuff that doesn't sell, they're, they're bouncing it out of there. Books that make money, they get to stay on the shelves. So look, you know, now is the time more than ever. If you really like a book, sell it and sell it to your friends. You have the power to keep a book on the shelves now more than ever. You want it to sell? You got to get people to buy it. Uh, woke Twitter, this is your time to step up to the plate. You want to... You want everybody to buy those snowflake and safe space books? You better get your ass to the store and you better buy them because if they don't sell, and this isn't going to be like Marvel, uh, they're gone. All right. And I'm going to tell you what, I expect Marvel to get new leadership probably next year and they're going to do the same stuff that DC Comics is doing right now. Now, I haven't heard that from anybody, but with you look at DC, when you look at Disney and how bad they're doing, I expect them to start cutting fat too. Putting out these, uh, putting out these new warrior books, Iceman books, stuff like that. I expect those to get cold too. I think Marvel's gonna get ran like a business too. And don't be surprised when you see the chainsaw go through their editorial department as well. 
So they talk about Michelle and uh, Marie. I've already talked to the talk about them. The notable thing here is where they come from. Young adult line and digital books. That's why they're being put in as editor in chiefs because that's the future. Marie who headed digital and Michelle who, who headed the Y imprint. That's what the future is for at t when it's concerned with DC comics. That's where the future is for them. They're going to focus on those two brands. Yes, that does probably mean some woke nonsense for the YA, but from what I understand, YA books are a bunch of woke nonsense anyway. That's why they wanted to put out that uh, Gotham High and that Under the Sea book with the Aqualad guy. They're probably going to try those out. Scholastic is kind of guaranteed money, to be honest. So if those sell, they're going to keep making them. If not, they'll, they'll switch brands. I don't know. Uh, I don't really care about the YA imprint too much, to be honest. Uh, the digital books, I would like to see stepped up and be good. And some of those have actually been pretty good. I think you're just going to see a lot of books move over there. So Red Hood, right, getting canceled. Could you see a digital revival of that book? I think you could. I think you could. Uh, do you still have the title publisher? Yes. Does your job change at all? He pretty much just talks about how he's got more expectations and responsibilities from here. Uh, the, and then he talks about fandom. What I wanted to talk about was a snappy little joke here. One rumor that I heard this week is that DC is going to sell only sell trades and original graphic novels and make a deal with Marvel for them to publish DC comics. Okay. Now, I like how they, they sh this should have been split into two questions, all right? And this is a stupid question because, number one, you should have said, is DC going to focus more on original graphic novels and trades? That would have been a yes. Or uh, we're committed to the future of comics or something like that, some political answer. Uh, the, the, the idea that Marvel was going to publish their comics has always been ridiculous. Why would Marvel do that? That's stupid. Um, I don't see that ever happening. But them focusing on original graphic novels and trades, yeah, that is the future for them. Original graphic novels, you can count those YA books in there for that too. Um, rumor has it that at t hates comics and wants to get out of the comic business. Uh, Jim Lee gives a very interesting answer here. He doesn't outright deny it. I don't think they want us to stop. They, I don't think they want to stop us from publishing comics. Comics serve a lot of different purposes, and one of them is a great. And one of them is it's a great way to incubate ideas and creating the next great franchises. We want to continue that. Why would you want to stop that? Why would you want to stop creating great content that could be used? across the greater enterprise. Now, what's interesting here is you're already seeing the coal. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop making comics. It's not going to happen. They're still going to make comics. They're going to make digital comics. They're going to make graphic novels, young adult novels, digital, all that stuff. That doesn't they're not quitting comics. I've never said they're going to quit making comics. What I've always said and what I've always stand by, because it's happening right now, is that they're going to reduce the amount of comics physically that they make greatly. And you're already seeing it. They're culling the fat. They don't understand floppies. They don't get floppies. Uh, there's been shareholder meetings where they yell about not understanding the market. The two women that have been put in charge of the, of the company don't understand floppies and they don't they don't get it okay that that sends a big message at t doesn't hate comics they just don't get them they're, they're a cell phone company so there's some interesting stuff here the rest of it is dc universe that's cold all that content is going to hbo max that makes total sense a uh, dc direct well what are they going to do they're going to license out that stuff so Hey, you want to make a you want to make a DC toy or a toy company? Buy the license. He says, "Where does he see DC Comics in two years? Uh, you'll definitely see more international content. You're going to see more digital content. When you talk about growing our business, both physical and digital, to me, the opportunities are global. 
that's what we'll be focusing on. Sometimes that takes the form of content that we take here and translate and sell in other marketplaces, but we want to partner with creatives in various territories and unlock stories that feel authentic to their marketplaces and characters with characters that they can embrace as their own and look for opportunities to take those characters and seed them throughout our mythology. Now, that makes me wonder, you know, in various territories, are they going to try to do something with manga? I think so. Uh, Marvel has tried that uh, with mixed results, mostly always a failure. Uh, I think you'd likely see that fail as well, unless you were to somehow be able to make that work with some uh, Japanese creatives. But usually it just doesn't work very well. So with digital, that's more of a windowing issue, meaning we will go out there with digital content and the stuff that performs well in digital also performs well in print. A good example of this is Injustice, the digital comics that tied into the video game when that came out. It was the best-selling digital comic of the year. It outsold Batman and bought and brought a lot of adjacent fans into our business. And when we took that content and reprinted it in physical form, we sold hundreds of thousands of units it was a big hit in physical as in digital. And that's exactly what I've been saying. It's exactly what I've been saying. All right. And that's a perfect example of how they see the future right there. Taking digital books and then producing them in the, in the physical printed form. That's what we've all been saying. So they'll put a comic out in periodical format digitally. And then they're going to collect it and sell it probably in a graphic novel. It's really not that crazy, and it's not that bad of idea, an idea, to be honest. You'll still get your periodicals, but you're going to get a collected trade. That's what's going to come out as the physical version of the book. I mean, is that a little different than what we're used to? Yeah, but at least the characters will survive, and at least we'll get to still keep reading comics. I mean, it's it sucks, but, you know, and change is different, but... It's not all that bad. At least they're not ending. At least we're still going to get comics, physical comics. I personally like trade paperbacks, to be honest. I like them because you can put them on a shelf and they look nice. Uh, omnibuses, I'm a really big fan of omnibus comics. Like I love reading large collected trades. Like To me, you know, this just, I like this. I like whatever helps DC comics survive and still putting out books. That's what I like. I would like them to be able to bounce back and make big profits because that would ensure the future of the comic book industry. I want them to survive. They're not going to make money selling floppies all over the place that don't sell. All right. And that's what they're saying here. So listen to this. We're using that as a model as we go out and do more digital content. We'll take the most successful books and repackage it as a physical book. I think there's definitely business to be had in, dis in physical periodicals. But that said, I think there's greater upside in digital because we can go to a more global audiences and the barrier to entry, especially in this pandemic, is lower. It's a lot easier to get digital content in the hands of consumers that want to read stories. We want to lean into that and think thoughtfully what digital content should be, what it should look like, the format. I'll tell you what that what that format is. Make it cheap. All right, those $2 books that they have or whatever, those are probably the future. What does that mean? It means lower page rates and uh, lower pay for people that create the stuff. Uh, hey, you know, <laughs> these people, they say they don't care about money anyway, right? You're not, they're not in the business. They're not in the comic business to make money. <laughs> That's something they've always said. Look, whatever makes DC Comics survive, I'm on board with it. I would like the company to keep giving me Batman stories, Superman stories, and they've got to do what they've got to do. So what do we learn from, D from Jimmy's uh, interview? Digital is the future. Graphic novels are the future. I've been saying this for months. And, uh, you know, welcome to the future of comic books in the West. I wish they would have just focused on making good stuff like manga does. Manga is doing just fine the way it is. And obviously, anybody that knows anything about My Hero Academia knows that people's thirst for superheroes is quite alive. That series is actually one of the most popular TV shows in America, by the way. 
And I'm pretty sure the manga is pretty popular as well. So people like superheroes. They just don't like superheroes focused on political ideology. Anyway, that's it, guys. What do you guys think about all this? I know this is a longer video, but there was a lot to go over. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Also, throw a like up, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out.